the awards, I paid the book for you, but I can't work for you. Um, I was have been satisfied with um, even uh, with your opponent, a good friend of mine. But then again, I looked at the quality and the uh, veracity of your work, and I want to see your work keep on going. Okay, and I brought a general donation to your campaign also. Mr. Robert. <laughs> I campaigned for Reverend Durham when he ran for election for the chair. Right. And when he became appointed prior to running, what people didn't realize. He came in on the rough side of the mountain. Amen. That's right. There was a lot of stuff that wasn't covered in War Three. The Mark was a good guy. I respect him. All that's good. The Reverend Jordan came in on the rough side of the mountain. One thing that people admire about him. Is not over and beyond the pressure, but being decent, yes. honest, and order. How can people follow somebody or anybody that sounds smooth and butter and crafty as a raider if they're not honest? And he made a showing to the people that they can trust him. Because they have heard so much, but left being done. He improved a lot of issues that were brought up when he came in. It was a lot of ideology that was going on here. Sometimes you have to correct what's in place before you want another love. And if you're not trying to replace what's already involved, how can you do another pledge to the people I'm going to do? Everything that Reverend Jordan said from first beginning, he proved himself. He didn't say, I'm going to do it. He's the only one who's fine. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Because you was boots on the ground. Mm. 
and we often talk about being boots on the ground. And I watched, and after talking to you over the last few months, I see something that I, I haven't seen before. And, I, and I'm glad you're here. Sometimes, you know, and, and I don't knock nobody, but I, I often say to, we have to uh, 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 get out the pool pit and get in the street. Because that's where the work is. Amen. I'm honored to be one of the ones in the community that people trust. And it's an honor that you allowed me the opportunity to come to you and say, Councilman Joyner, we need this in the community, and you act upon it. You, you, you mentioned about the substance abuse program that's taking place in the community. Thank you for making contacts where we can make that happen. There are lives being changed in Ward 3 through Narcotics Anonymous, substance abuse uh, program where people are really, you know, um, having their lives changed. There are um, community wealth building. People are, are excited about being able to buy their first home, afford it. That's a program that, that's needed. You know, um, so we, 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 we also have some tragedies that happen in Ward 3 and throughout Rocky Mountain. And I can say, because I was there with you, this, this, the morning that um, QBC caught fire, mm -hmm. you were the first on the scene. You were the first on the scene. You made a phone call, Robert, can we get water, whatever the first responders needed. You acted upon that. Wow. And we thank you for that. You know, so I cannot speak enough by just being by your side and watching you, you know, do the work. So as a councilman that's moving forward, we, we expect you to take the seat for the next two years, and we want to continue the work that you start. There's no need to interrupt it now. There's no need to interrupt it now. Your, your work is speaking for itself. So I'm honored to be here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I can't thank you for the opportunity for, for bringing me up under your wing because it's also showing me other stuff that I didn't know. So not only are you my councilman, which has become my spiritual advisor, which has become my best friend. Mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you to everyone for allowing me to be within your midst. Um, you know, uh, I'm, again, I'm Robert Nett, brand development. You know, I, I plan to do here what I can't do and really fulfill my passion and help bring the community to where it needs to be. Because, uh, you know, like they always say, you know, you need to go somewhere where you're celebrated and not tolerated. And so I'm excited That's to right. be here in the midst, 45 minutes away um, from, from my home. But I'm just excited. I've got an engine that just won't turn off. And so I wanted to put some of that engine um, in, in, uh, in Edgecombe County if you would have. Thank you so much. Awesome.
that's where God created us from. And from that earth, he brings out of it resources for people. And I have called him on occasion to have conversations. He's on the track. I can barely hear what he's saying. And, but I'm so thankful to know that his resources reach so far and wide. And I'm personally thankful that they're at the farmer's market on Saturday in the summertime where I can go and get some. Because my father was a farmer and I ran away from home. I was like, I don't want to be out there getting dirty. But that's where God blesses us from, from the earth, and is um, you know, a shrinking um, resource you know, for black farmers to be out there in the earth producing food for us to nourish ourselves because it's hard as time my grandma always talked about we better get ready for hard times. Mm -hmm. And he has been preparing us for hard times mm -hmm. and walking with us through these times with a vision to carry us forward. And I don't live in his board, but I'm happy to see his signs. And I came by to get some of these because I work in your board. And some of the individuals there are in that younger generation. And I asked him, I'm early voting is the high. And we have to continue to nourish and teach this generation behind us the importance and the significance of voting and to let them know who has been helping them. So, Mr. Um, Joyner, I am happy to be here today. I invited 200 people where I So, <laughs> so God bless you. Let me go and get mine in. I'm uh, Camilla Stancy from Pine Top. I cannot vote for him, but I'm working hard. Um, I've been knowing him since the late 80s when he was at Eastern Star in Tarboro. Um, they began um, CEO, Community Enrichment Organization. But you know what rings in my mind is when people talk about um, he don't live in Rocky Mount. As far as I'm concerned, he have always lived in Rocky Mount because what comes to my mind is the Bassett Center. Um, he was going in that neighborhood when people in Rocky Mount wouldn't even go in that neighborhood. And after this uh, election is over, I have been telling folk I want to cap. I, I got a lot of history because I've been videoing since the late 90s, but I want to uh, get with him and do uh, capture some of this history. Um, but in, but 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 what's like I say I, I just get so sick and tired of some folks saying that he don't live in Rocky Mount. Again, he has been here since the late '80s. I know of, and probably before then. Just like myself, I've been working over here for 35 years. Come right by this place, didn't even know where it was. <laughs> Somebody told me today I come to here five o'clock in the morning, so I ain't know where the place was. I've been by, came by here this morning, and and I went to work at five. Had to go to Greenville, take my wife to the dock to come back to work. I didn't have to, but I came back. I love to work. And so when I got off, I came through here to make sure I knew where it was and where to fit my car. But anyway, get back to uh, this brother. This brother has done some great things. Um, not only, um, I know him from the Bassett Street. Let me go back. When he was appointed, I spoke out because I spoke out against the, the, um, the process. Not about him because I know he could do the work. But if anybody know me, I, um, I um, want to make sure things is on the up and up. Once he got in, he have done more than some folk have done over the years. And I asked the question at the forum last week in Tarboro to the candidates. What can you do more than this guy has done in three years? He haven't even served a full term. That's right. And the only thing they said was, well, I'm going to continue to do what he do with what you're running for. Now, I, I, I helped one of the candidates when um, they ran for mayor. Mm -hmm. but they wanted the appointment. Now, if they had to want the appointment and want to run against them again, now I wasn't going to be on his side. But then the young female, I was in the board of election that day, didn't know who she was, had never seen her. And she told me she was going to run against Reverend Jordan. But she told me she had worked on this farm and all this kind of stuff. So 
my mind was boggling. I've been trying to work with the young lady, trying to educate her to, to just sit back and, 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 and follow Richard and, and, and learn the process. Well, today she tried to have me kicked off Facebook. I had to disagree with that, so they put me back on. And no, I, I just try to help folk. But this brother right here, like someone said, uh, the last thing he want to do is pray. Now, sometimes we talk four or five o'clock in the morning. Yes. And he said, man, let's, let's pray. Definitely. And, you know, I need that as a, well, I ain't young no more, 59 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but I need that <laughs> because, you know, they come for me just like they come for him. But this brother is so sincere and he has, I'm going to tell you, he don't have to do what he do. And if he don't do anything else, he has done enough. So, I mean, we just need to get behind him, make sure he get back in, give him another turn. And I'm quite sure he's going to come out. And these folk ought to be willing to work along with him so they could take his place. So we just got to keep him encouraged. I know he's going to keep on doing what he do. But I'm just excited. Like I said, I can't vote for him, but I'm just excited as he is. Because I love to see brothers trying to do what's right. And it should be an encouragement to all the parents need to be saying, look at this man. Look at what he's doing. He don't have to do it. He don't have any kids. He had bunches of kids when they started CEO. He don't, he don't even have any kids. But his, his, he loves his family, his uh, nephews and nieces. I mean, he's their dad. You know. So just get behind this brother. Make sure we get him in. Because the, the last thing I want to say is, just because he, I can't vote for him, I'm, the, I'm a precinct chair in Edgecombe County. I'm on the executive committee. I'm on the state North Carolina Democratic Party executive committee. So it makes a difference who you elect to the table, whether you can vote for him or not. So just because you can't vote for him, if you in his ward, it makes a difference when it comes time to replace folks like the sheriff. He'll have a vote. You got to make sure you got key people in place. So I'm going to end there because I can go on and on. So after this election, I'm going to let him tell the story <laughs> on a video so y'all can go back and look at it. Appreciate you, my brother. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, everybody. Hey. Uh, okay. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's tall. Mm -hmm. He was a pastor, a recent star and he was a kind of pastor that kind of slept early in the afternoon, got up late at night, walked on the street, and harassed him. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so, and he used to walk the street, and, and people, his, his members were afraid for him, and, and I met him through my pastor, my church, which is Gateway to Heaven at the time. And so I asked him one day, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he continued, I don't know, I don't know anytime anyone ever hurt him or tried to hurt him. But that's, and that's what we can expect him, you know, and how he was so committed to the community even way back then. And there was a lot of, there was not a lot of people who were out working in the community mm -hmm. where he was in town where uh, East Town at the time. And then, and then after that, every time he saw him in town, he had some new project uh, where he was trying to help kids or help families. And then the next thing I knew, we had started a children's car wash for, for teens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my son became one of his teens. Wow. And uh, my son hated going to work for him. But we were going to show up with a truck full of other kids. And they would come by and get him and go to work uh, downtown on top of him. And so, and for some reason, I always believe that the Lord kind of connected us because I love community work too. And I you know, love the Lord more. And that time, anyway, in church praying. And accessory and all that. And he was always just praying, just praying, just praying. And so the Lord was really used him to help me start a nonprofit, Bridging the Gap. And he he became like an unofficial board member and introduced me to all kinds of folk who had passion for working with children, for working with community. And the relationship just flourished from that point on. And he used to be on my nerves sometimes. And I didn't know how to do it. But uh, it, was a, it was always a good relationship. Reverend 
going on. If he got upset with you, he really didn't know until he back to you. Um, and then he would always want to pray before you hang up. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> And then when I um, decided to run, you know, he was one of the first ones I called to see whether it was a will of the Lord. So we started praying all about that. And then we ended up with a team of seven people, seven people because we were in Jordan. And we would pray. And we would meet in the early in the morning and we would go out and walk in the wall. We would ride through neighborhoods. In the name of Jesus, we came this neighborhood, we came this street, knock on people's doors. And it really worked, it really helped. And so we kind of formed that bond. And it really, once we got up at the end of the nonprofit, John, where we were able to form a partnership. And I met a lot of other, um, you know, influential people through Rubber John, because he knew everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was always trying to help do something good. You know, I know he's not perfect. I mean, none of us are. Mm -hmm. But always trying to help do something good. And so it really blessed me. I've been in that organization for 13 years, and Shelly Willingham is one of our, uh, our last, um, he was the last chairman of the board. And so he helped me grow it also, and he was also very influential, but today is called Robert Juan. And so I'm so honored to be here. I didn't know I was going to be in the bank, I'm glad I did. And thank you for the service. Thank you for continuing your work. Try to get some blessings. Enjoy it.